In the previous episode, we explored the intriguing possibility that the Dome of the Rock is actually Solomon's Temple, based on evidence from various historical maps and drawings. These maps, some dating back to the 1100s, depict a structure resembling the Dome of the Rock, often labeled as Temple of Solomon. This challenges the widely accepted view that Solomon's temple was destroyed long ago, with only vague remnants remaining. We also examined an 1887 drawing of Jerusalem, where the Dome of the Rock is labeled as the Palace of Kings, suggesting that historical narratives might have shifted over time. Perhaps the current dome is merely the top portion of a much larger buried structure, potentially the original temple itself. This idea, if true, could reshape our understanding of one of the world's most significant religious sites, revealing that Solomon's temple may have been hiding in plain sight all along. Anyway, this is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Our ancestors asserted that Solomon's treasure was immeasurable. More than all the riches in the world combined. More than all the kings. The Bible says that he produced 666 talents of gold a year. Interesting number there. Solomon was said to own miraculous gadgets. The Ark of Covenant, directly from God, a flying carpet with which he visited the Queen of Sheba, a strange worm that could drill holes into rock. Apocryphal sources say Solomon possessed a ring he had received from Archangel Michael. The ring enabled him to command an army of demons to build his temple. And many more. Regardless of whether you believe any of this, there are influential people who do. My point is, don't you think they'd already have started digging by now? And why is Solomon's temple at the center of Freemasonic rituals? Why are Masonic lodges modeled after the temple? Why does some Masonic literature claim that restoring the temple is the basis of world peace? And why do they compare the forming of human character with the building of Solomon's temple? I don't know the answer. But I do know that the top of the original temple is said to have been made in the shape of a human. The list of archaeological excavations in Jerusalem proves thrilling, in light of what we just discussed. The first excavation was Warren's shaft at Gihin Spring, which is right outside of Solomon's temple. It's exactly where you'd want to dig if you wanted to find the stuff underneath without destroying it. This was done in 1867. More digging at Gihin was done in 1995. In 1938 they started digging at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, using earthquake repair works as an excuse. They discovered Byzantine and Greek structures, as if oblivious that this was Solomon's building. Between 1961 and 1967, Kathleen Kennedy excavated to the immediate south of the Temple Mount, according to Wikipedia. Again, that's exactly where you'd want to dig in search of Solomonic treasure without destroying it. Eagle Shiloh conducted excavations at around the same place, at the city of David, which is adjacent to the Temple Mount. All excavations, except one relate to the Temple Mount. They know what's there, but they don't want to let you in on it. Jerusalem is full of secret and non-secret tunnels. I've gone into one of these tunnels. I don't know why nobody stopped me. I am not sure which tunnel I was in, but it was beside the Wailing Wall, and there were a number of Jews inside, sitting at tables and studying their scripture. I'm guessing that I entered what is called the Western Wall Tunnel. Back then, I didn't realize I'm walking through the preserved underground halls of Solomon's Temple. After some time, I came to a locked gate, and had to turn back. No doubt, these tunnels go much further than the public are told. Now, understanding the old maps, these tunnels are in fact the hallways of the temple. This is from the Wikipedia page on Temple Mount. The name Temple Mount is really accurate. I have marked potentially fabricated history in red. The Temple Mount, Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, and sometimes as Jerusalem's holy esplanade, is a hill in the old city of Jerusalem that has been venerated as a holy site in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam for thousands of years. The plaza is surrounded by retaining walls, including the Western Wall, originally built by King Herod in the 1st century BCE, with additions from the late Byzantine, early Muslim, Mamluk, and Ottoman periods, and can be reached through 11 gates, 10 reserved for Muslims, and 1 for non-Muslims. The courtyard is also surrounded on the north and west by two Mamluk-era porticos, Riwak, and four minarets. It is dominated by two monumental structures originally built during the Rashidun and early Umayyad Caliphates, after the city's capture in 637 c. 
the main praying hall of Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the Dome of the Rock, near the center of the hill, which is the oldest extant Islamic structure in the world. The Temple Mount is the place where past Jewish temples are commonly believed to have stood, which places it, along with the nearby Western Wall, among the holiest sites in Judaism. According to Jewish tradition and scripture, the first temple was built by King Solomon, the son of King David, in 957 BC, and was destroyed by the Neo-Babylonian Empire, together with Jerusalem, in 587 BC. No archaeological evidence has been found to verify this, but scientific excavations have been limited due to religious sensitivities. The second temple was constructed under the auspices of Zerubbabel in 516 BC, was renovated by King Herod, and was destroyed by the Roman Empire in 70 C. Orthodox Jewish tradition maintains it is here that the third and final temple will be built when the Messiah comes. Apart from official archaeological excavations, others have also sought access to the subterranean Temple Mount under many guises. These quotes are from an article titled, Secret Chambers of the Temple Mount. On September 12, 1864, a team of six British surveyors began examining the polluted water supply of the Holy City. The request for the survey was made by a committee of English missionaries stationed in Jerusalem, with the cooperation of the Turkish officials. It should be noted that the cooperation of the Turks was not due to any health concern, but rather because of the constant flow of bribes from the missionaries. The surveying team was granted total access to all areas of the Holy City, including the Temple Mount. The expedition was headed by Charles Wilson, a 28-year-old captain in the British Royal Engineer Corps. Wilson was chosen because of his intimate knowledge of ancient history, his familiarity with the infant science of archaeology, and his expertise in surveying. He realized the unique opportunity that was about to take place. In the past, the Turkish administrators had never allowed any type of scientific exploration or investigation of the holy sites. It was rare that non-Muslims were granted entrance onto the Temple Mount. They claimed it was about surveying the water quality. If you're going to survey the water quality, why do you choose a military engineer with an intimate knowledge of ancient history? The water surveying excuse is a flimsy cover story. The survey's mission was ostensibly to examine the water supply of the city, however, they managed to do extensive archaeological work, mapping, recording, and photographing their finds. The most fascinating aspect of the expedition was the examination of the underground cisterns of the Temple Mount itself. Most of these were actually the converted remains of underground Second Temple structures. And there you have it. Remains of underground temple structures. And this wasn't even an archaeological mission. According to the article, the Dome of the Rock is the exact place where Wilson discovered the Holy of Holies, the room that housed the Ark of Covenant. After viewing the old maps, I am not surprised. What does Holy of Holies mean? It means the most holy. Ancient tradition considers this place the center of the earth. Old maps show Jerusalem as the center of earth. Today, if you enter the place, there is a gigantic rock there. They say the Ark of Covenant was removed from the temple at some time. Some say it was removed by the Crusaders and later kept by the Templars. But what if it's still in the Holy of Holies? What if it's somewhere far under that rock, at the center of the earth? If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 3.